All right, all you authors out there, help me out with a mic check. This is Megan in Author Like a Boss. Um, please help me out with my sound. I've been having some sound issues, so um, let me know if you can hear me and whether or not I sound like a Dalek, which is a good party trick. I'm going to uh, <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can use that for Halloween, but let me know. How am I coming through? Um, hopefully okay. If not, I may just have to postpone this live because um, there may be a larger issue here. So let me know. How am I coming through? And how are you doing today? What are you working on? What's your writing? Um, what's going on in your writing? Let me know that too. Okay, doke. So I'm not getting any feedback. Um, and I really, I want you guys to be able to get the book blurb recipe. So please. Oh, thank you, Melissa. Okay. Um, all right. We had to just stop everything and restart it. That's the oldest trick, right? Turn it off and turn it back on again. All right. Thanks for your patience, everybody. So, uh, take two on book blurb recipes, part one. Um, uh, if you haven't watched my videos before, I'm Megan. I am one of the co-creators of the Author Like a Boss Facebook group and um, the Author Boss Academy. Um, together with uh, my cohort, Ella, we help you author like a boss. And that mean, means covering topics that you need to write better, to market better, and basically to get the success that you want as an indie author. So today's topic is book blurbs recipe part one. And the reason I'm talking about book blurbs, in fact, I've been talking about them all this month, is because no matter what genre you write in, if you want to sell books, you need a great blurb. A great blurb is the difference between people really getting excited and hitting read more and then hitting buy or going, meh, I'll pass, you know, and finding the next thing. A blurb is your chance to let people know how powerful your book is in just a really short little mini kind of commercial. So I want to hear from you guys. How much do you not like writing book blurbs? Because I have a feeling it's a lot. This is something people complain about. They're like, oh, I don't know how to give it buzz. So let me know in the comments. If one is like, oh, I love book blurbs. They're so easy. I could just do that all day. And 10 is, they give me a headache and I wish I could do anything else. I would rather give the cat a bath. Let me know. <laughs> Tell me in the comments. One to 10. How do you feel about writing book blurbs? For me, it's probably about an eight. It's something that's really challenging. And part of the challenge is because I know my story, right? And you know your story. <laughs> Thanks, Mike, for giving me an irrational number of how much you don't like writing book blurbs. <laughs> I don't even know where the square root sign is on my keyboard. Keyboard, I love it. Um, oh, Amanda has a nine. Wayne, okay, you don't feel too bad about them. But, um, a four. Ooh, nice. Uh, Dave loves writing book blurbs. Awesome. Dave, we're sending all of our book blurb writing to you because here's the thing. Writing our own book blurbs is a challenge. We want to put everything, all the exciting stuff from our books into the blurb. And I've definitely struggled with this. And what has made all the difference for me is a recipe. So that's what I'm going to walk you guys through today is how to use a recipe so you're not stuck in that, you know, five or above range. We want to get you down to like the, the four, like Wayne feels. Yeah, I can write a book blur, maybe even a three, or maybe even a one. I could sit and write them all day. <laughs> All right. So um, does it sound good to you guys to wrangle book blurbs and to um, get a recipe so that writing them doesn't feel um, like such a pain in the rear? You guys down for that? Let me know. Give me an emoji. Give me a heck yeah. want to do it. All right. So um, here's, here's the, the big shift I want you to think about making. I want to invite you to make. A lot of people say, oh, a book blurb is hard because I don't know what to leave out, right? You're like, I have my whole book and then I don't know what to leave out. And I want you to scratch that and instead think, okay, my book blurb is like a recipe. It's like a dish I'm making. And so I'm only going to add in the things that are in the recipe. Are we down for that? You guys ready to get the recipe so you add things in instead of trying to take everything out? Because that's overwhelming. You got a long book. You don't want to have to go, what do I take out? Instead, let's look at the only things we need to add in. Okay. So 
Um, I'll be taking you through the first part of that recipe today, the core ingredients. And what we're going to talk about is character and conflict, steaks, not, not a, I know I'm talking about recipes, but steaks with an A, not an EA, um, and then the cliffhanger. So um, jumping in with character and conflict is a really important part of the recipe because readers connect to stories because of characters, right? That's why we keep reading. So your blurb has to give readers a sense of your protagonist and also has to give us a reason to care about your protagonist. Well, that could happen in a lot of different ways. Think about your main character's challenges. We all connect with people who are facing challenges. Is your main character an underdog? Does your main character just keep having lots of bad luck? Give us that, we will totally connect. Maybe your main character has special powers or special insights or an approach to life that is wacky and fun and not like anything else. Think of Pippi Longstocking. Did you guys read the Pippi Longstocking books when you were a kid or watch the movies? That's um, a story we want to hear specifically because of the characters. Um, your main character might draw us because how of how readers will see themselves in that person. So, uh, you know, a, a Wrinkle in Time, the movie is coming out and I'm really, really excited to see it because this was one of my favorite books growing up. Like reading about a character with crazy hair and glasses whose name was Meg for some weird reason really resonated with me. Oh, and the most important thing, she had a temper problem. And like seeing myself in that character was such a powerful thing as a young reader. So if you can help your readers see themselves in your character, that's another way to connect. Um, that's, is that making sense that your, um, your main character is gonna be a point of connection? Once you've got that point of connection, you need to put that main character that you just made people care about into a conflict, right? So the feeling is like, oh man, I just got to know about Katniss and think she's like super plucky and brave and fiercely protective of her family. And now you're telling me she has to fight for her life? Okay, well, I gotta find out how that ends. I'm invested. So this is ingredient one of your blurb, your character and some way to connect to your character and then the conflict. Hey, Cecilia, good to see you. Let me know, is that making sense? Why that would grab readers? Do you see how getting a, a really good picture of who your protagonist is and then putting that protagonist in a dangerous situation is gonna immediately invest readers? And it can happen in the space of one or two sentences. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, it's a lot easier uh, to write your blurb if you're crystal clear on your main character and her major traits and also on your central conflict because those are the things that you're wanting to give to us in our blurb. And we actually go into a lot more detail about how to pinpoint both of those, your main character and who she is and um, what your uh, main conflict is in the Author Boss Academy. If you want to find out more about that, you should join us for the live webinar we're doing tomorrow. I'll put a link to that in the comments. You'll have an opportunity to hear more about that academy and also just more about how to author like a boss. Um, all right, that is the first ingredient. So at this point, give me a sense of if you are starting to, if your number is starting to come down, if you were at a nine before, you're like, hmm, an 8.5 is they're feeling like a little bit of ease um, about the possibility of creating your blurb if you know okay in one or two sentences my character my conflict I feel like I could do that um... <laughs> all right Cassie we'll miss you but I hope you have a great cat show <laughs> sounds like fun if you can't be at an event with me and Ella the next best place to be obviously is at a cat show I mean right <laughs> if you can't be with us you should at least be with felines Oh, good. Okay, Wayne, you came down from a 4 to a 3.47. Gosh, you guys are so, so precise. Uh, next, I want to move on to talking about the stakes. Um, in your blurb, the stakes might be something that you don't think about. You, you're probably like, yeah, Megan, I know I had to put my character and my conflict in, but you might not have really gotten clear about the stakes. But let me tell you a little bit more about why it's so important to have the stakes in your blurb. The stakes of the book, as in what's at stake, are going to help readers self-select 
for the types of book they like to read. Now, by the time they're reading your book blurb, there should already have been some self-selection. If you have followed Ella's instructions about how to make a cover that sells, your cover will, will already be broadcasting the type of book you have. And then when somebody gets in to read your blurb, that message will be reinforced. And when I'm reading through, I'm looking for, are the characters in mortal danger, right? Or um, is this, uh, you know, a situation like Game of Thrones where anybody could die at any time for any reason? You know, what should I be expecting? Or is this more like The Hobbit where as a reader, I feel pretty safe that most of the characters are going to make it all the way through to the end. And that if somebody dies, it's going to be like a big deal and I'll have time to deal with it emotionally. Those are really different kinds of reading experiences, whether it's just like everybody, everybody's in danger and you could die at any time or no, everybody's mostly going to be okay, right? Very different feelings. And knowing the stakes helps readers imagine what they'll feel like when they're reading. If you tell me you wrote a mystery, that can mean a lot of different things. You know, will I be terrified as the detective is uncovering one gruesome murder after another? Or am I just going to be intrigued as the characters play tennis and make cryptic remarks over tea? A totally different kinds of feel. We talk more about stakes in the Author Boss Academy so that you can get help with narrowing down your genre and knowing exactly what kinds of stakes your readers are going to be expecting. You want to give them what they're expecting for your genre. And once you do that, it becomes a lot easier to target those stakes in your blurb and make them clear to readers. The other really important reason to make the stakes clear in your blurb, of course, is that it excites your readers. Um, they're going to know uh, like what kinds of things that uh, they should be looking forward to or excited about. Um, and again, this is about self-selecting for your genre. So for a thriller, you want to let readers know that the closer the detective gets to the killer, the closer the killer gets to the detective, da, 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 right? And people who like thrillers are going to get all excited. But for a cozy mystery, you want readers to know that a dark secret might be revealed that could shock the residents of the quaint little British town. And let me tell you, thriller readers will get that level of excitement for, you know, from the thriller description, but cozy mystery readers are going to get their own level of excitement. You don't need to have um, blockbuster movie lights and sounds and um, special effects if that's not your genre. So when I talk about exciting people and letting them know about the stakes, this is such a, an important thing to know. It doesn't have to be death is on the line because that's not what readers of every genre want. Readers of thrillers want that, but readers of cozy mysteries or of um, YA fantasy are looking for something different as the, the stakes. Oh, Mike, you quoted A Wrinkle in Time to me because I was talking about it. <laughs> um, or maybe that's your blurb for it, huh? Um, but yes, the power of a compelling character, the power of a character we connect with. All right, so what are you guys, give me a check-in. What are you thinking about the stakes? Are you imagining the stakes of your own book? In fact, let me hear from you. Um, in your current work in progress, are the stakes life or death? Are they about relationships dismantling? Are they about people having to grow and um, let go of old ways? What's something, let me know in the comments, what's something that's at stake for your main character? Anything from the possibility of dying to the possibility of, oh, I might lose my friend or I might lose my job. Let me know, what's at stake for your character? That would be something to be, um, to get you started on your book blurb and help you see what, um, uh, what you might use for the stakes in your book blurb. Um, oh, Wayne, I apologize about misrepresenting Game of Thrones. I'll be totally honest. I've never seen it. I've never read the books. I just know everybody was shocked that, that anybody could die at any moment. <laughs> it seemed like a very high stakes to be living in that no matter how important the character was, you could die at any moment. Um, Cassie says, I have trouble when I have subplots because there can be multiple stakes. Oh, absolutely. But remember, for the purposes of your blurb, we only care about your main character. We only care about this one 
um, glimpse into your story. And this, again, if you leave behind the mindset of what do I have to take out? You know, I have this whole story. What do I have to take out? And instead think I'm building a recipe, one ingredient at a time. And the only ingredient that this recipe calls for is my main character's conflict and the stakes involved for her. It's, it's not, of course, a true representation of all the subtlety of your book, but it's, it's something that readers can latch onto, right? It's too much to try to give them all the different points of connection. Instead, pick one point of connection and make it really strong. Oh, we got a stake. A mystery um, group of red figures kill cities off while a man with no last name rises to put the pieces together. Ooh, so that sounds like um, cities being killed off is pretty high stakes. I'm expecting a lot of action and adventure. If you told me those are the stakes of your book, Wayne, and then the your book turned out to be a lot of scenes of meetings, I would be pretty sad and disappointed. <laughs> your stakes really help people imagine what your scenes will be like in your book as well. Let's move to the third ingredient of this first part of the book blurb recipe, and that is your cliffhanger. Okay, pop quiz. When are people reading your book blurb? Hmm, when will they be seeing this magical blurb? Hmm, hmm, what are your thoughts about that? Where, where will you put this book, book blurb once we can figure out how to write it? Where's it gonna go? Okay, I'm too impatient, I'm moving forward. <laughs> but if you are going to type before they buy it, give yourself 15 points and a pat on the back. Um, and remember that this is when people are making the choice. Now, are there other places to use your book blurb? Yes, and we're gonna cover that later in the month. But in general, it's fair to say people are looking at your book blurb when they're making the decision to go further. And that might mean they're hitting buy, that might mean they're coming back to your website or signing up on your newsletter, but they are making a choice to invest, whether it's literal money, money or time and energy. The cliffhanger is so important because it takes the interest you've developed when you gave us a character and a conflict and then the stakes so we knew what kind of story and what kind of scenes we were beginning. Um, and you take that interest and you ramp it up because yes, your reader is interested in finding out what happens to your main character, but you need to make her desperate. You need to make her need to take action right now. And you do that by posing some question or uh, suggesting a question or making the reader have a question. You know, something along the lines of, will the main character be able to do X before Y happens? This is um, tougher for some genres than others. If you're writing um, an action genre, then this, uh, coming up with a cliffhanger can be really fun because it's big and dramatic. Will she save the town before the volcano erupts and everybody is killed? If you're writing in a genre that's more subtle, if it's not action packed, this can be harder. This is um, something we love helping people with in the Author Boss Academy to take the idea of a cliffhanger and fine tune it for your genre so that it doesn't feel over the top, so that it doesn't feel out of character for the rest of the tone of your blurb and the tone of your book. Um, the way I like to come up with cliffhangers is the way I like to come up with most everything when it comes to writing the book blurb, which is to use formulas. So you guys, I want to share with you four formulas that work across the board for different genres. And um, I'm going to actually paste them into the, um, the comments because I want you to be able to practice with them. So let's take them one at a time and then, you know, give you a chance to practice them. The first one is to put your character in a time crunch. Um, and that was the example that I gave, you know, will the main character be able to do X before Y happens? So let me throw that in. Let me hear, take action. Let me hear for your book, give it a go. What would that sound like? What would be your time crunch? What um, in what way is your character racing against the clock? And again, you know, the, um, the stakes are going to come into play. The level of drama is going to come into play depending on your genre and your story. So go ahead and show me what that would look like for you. And then, um, I'll come back and 
check out the comments you're leaving, but let me give you the, the next one. The next formula I like to use is to stack the deck against your main character. That looks like with A, B, and C happening, will main character be able to, whatever it is, keep her cool and do this other thing? Um, this, again, can be for the world is coming to an end, or with, you know, with her cat keeping her all up all night yowling and her mom asking her when she's getting married and her boss constantly forgetting her name, will Julie ever find a life that makes her happy? It doesn't have to be life or death. <laughs> so, um, the, let me see how you guys, uh, would do a, a time or sorry, a, a stacking the deck against your main character kind of formula. The next one I really like is a hint at a danger that's even worse than what you've already revealed. And this might be, you know, but when mysterious events start occurring, main character has to figure out X before Y happens. Dun, dun, dun. That one still has a time element in it. Um, but this is nice if you're writing a story that has a twist. Um, who Chime in. Who worries about giving away too much in a book blurb? Anybody struggle with that? Do you think, oh, I have this really exciting plot development or this great twist, but I don't want readers to know it ahead of time. I really do want them to be surprised. If that's you, you might really love this, this type of formula where you hint at it. But when mysterious events start happening, because you don't have to tell us what's causing them, you know, but when the cats start disappearing from around town, right, you could just tell us the effects and we're left guessing what's causing that and how does it connect to that other conflict. Um, uh, so that could be a really cool one if you want to keep us in suspense and have a twist. Ooh, let's see. I'm getting some, um, I'm getting some cliffhangers. Main character knew he only had three days to figure out where the red figures would strike next. Ooh, nice. It makes me curious why there, why there would be only three days. What's happening in three days? Um, mm, all right. Uh, Miriam is asking, what about a novel that's more character-based than plot-based? This is for all novels. You got to give us a reason. You got to give us a, a, a reason why we want to find out desperately what's happening next. So Miriam, what I would recommend is um, use one of these formulas and tone it down so that it doesn't feel like a movie preview to you. But um, you might really love the next formula, which is a choice point. Ooh, this is great for character-driven novels. Um, when A happens or as event draws near, main character has to choose whether to X or to Y. And that's still a cliffhanger. We're still desperate to know um, what choice will she make, but that one is more centered on the character arc than on the external danger. So Miriam, let me know if you think that would work for you. Um, oh, Miriam, I apologize. Not Miriam. Mm, can Ella find the Elysium before the door home is sealed forever? Dun, 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 dun. Yep, see, I want to know. Sealed forever, right? Forever's a long time. <laughs> I want to know. Um, okay, cool, Marion. I'm glad. Yeah, so you guys, the four formulas are now in the chat, and I invite you to take action, whether you do it right now as you're watching this video or you make some time to do it somewhere else. Experiment with all four and see what you like, see what um, feels like it creates drama, um, test it out on other people, ask them if they're dying to know what happens next, and then um, tweak it to fit your genre and to fit your writing style so that um, you feel it, it represents the, the tone of your writing and also the stakes accurately. All right, so is this making sense? You guys like those formulas? You think you can use them? That's your homework. Go write four cliffhangers and come share them with us. Um, and yeah, post post them in the group. You don't have to do it in the comments right now, but post them in the Author Like a Boss Facebook group. Remember, if you're watching this video somewhere besides the Author Like a Boss Facebook group, you should come join us over there. It is the place to be if you are an indie author and you want to be successful and sell more books and make more awesome in the world. Um, all right, if you guys want to get reminders of when we go live, uh, you can just subscribe via this link. I'm going to put that in the chat. You get a little Facebook message right before we go live. 
Ooh, we got some more responses. Can he kill what can't be killed? Yeah, and you'll notice that some of these questions uh, that sound impossible are really extra exciting. So if that works for your genre, can he do the thing that can't be done? Oh, yes, we want to know. Um, and as I have been telling you guys about book blurbs, I've also been mentioning the Author Boss Academy, so I do want to let you know more about that. Um, the Author Boss Academy is the academy that Ella and I run that teaches you everything you know to um, successfully write, market, and publish your books. And it consists of an online portal that gives you 24-7 access to our writing and marketing courses that show you everything from how to write a book blurb <laughs> to um, how to set up your author website. Um, we have live weekly coaching calls. Ella helps you with your marketing pieces and I help you with your writing pieces and whatever you're working on, we help you move forward. We help you take your next steps and respond to uh, what you're coming up against, what you're struggling with, um, what your challenges are. We also have a private Facebook group for the Academy where you get accountability. Um, you get immediate answers to your questions. You get support, encouragement. It's a great place to build your launch team. We have people in the academy who, who are utilizing other academy members as ARC readers, as beta readers. Um, they're getting inspired by the cool graphics that one another are making. Um, it is a monthly subscription program and it's $59 a month. And if you'd like to know more about it, you should definitely join us for the webinar tomorrow where we'll be um, letting you know a little bit more about the Academy, but mostly about what you can do to author like a boss, some steps you can take right away to up your, to up your game. So I hope we will see you tomorrow for that webinar, and I hope we'll also see you next week for our live trainings. On Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, Ella will be talking about author websites, and she'll be covering how to build your website. It's not as hard as you think. So if you've been intimidated about making your author website, or you feel like you have to hire somebody to do it for you, this is going to be a really powerful training for you. And next Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific, I'll be continuing with part two of the book blurb recipe. Um, so make sure to catch that. And um, if you want to get notified, you can click that notify link. And if you found this video helpful, please like it, share it with another author so that that person can author like a boss as well. I hope to see you on tomorrow's live webinar, How to Author Like a Boss. And in the meantime, I wish you happy authoring. Have a great day, everybody.